What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV live from Israel once again for episode of a player ratings as we lost 1-0 to Roma in our last preseason game with the season bearing down on us within a week now. Uh, we're going to be in Israel for much longer because our flight has been cancelled. Uh, we are here until Wednesday nights, so back in the studio on Thursday, but we will be bringing you content um, up until then from Israel. Uh, so looking forward to that. And let's start off with our player ratings. Let's start off with Hugo Lloris, 6 for me, um, good save in the, in the opening minutes with that goal mouth scramble um, just in front of the goal, but couldn't really do much with the goal. And for the second half, I felt like, um, you know, he went off early, but he was, no, apart from that, hardly untested at all. Hardly tested at all. Yeah, obviously, uh, I gave him, I think I gave him a six as well. Yeah, I gave him a six as well. Um, that save obviously led to the goal, didn't it? Led to the corner, which they ultimately scored from. Um, but he... He didn't have too much to do. Um, I think distribution, he was um, rolling out very quickly to the centre-backs. Uh, kicking, I didn't see too much um, going wrong. I didn't see too much use of his distribution. Um, and he didn't have too many corners to deal with or anything. So it was just that one save to of note, which was a very good save from Point Blank Range. Mm. Moving on to Kuti Romero. I actually gave him an eight. Uh, on reflection, probably seven uh, might be fair for this one. But I felt like he actually struggled defensively a bit in the first half. And um, a lot of uh, their attacks were coming down the right-hand side where they were catching Doherty out, catching Romero out as well. Uh, but I felt like he did massively grow into the game in that second half. And he had a really strong battle with Zaniolo. There was one real crunching tackle as well um, that went in on Zaniolo where he was bear bearing down on goal. Uh, but ultimately, I, look, I thought it was a good display from Romero just in the first half he was getting caught out just a little bit yeah um, I think he was guilty of maybe being over aggressive sometimes but uh, I think on the day he probably was our best defender uh, all in all and I think um, I gave him a seven yeah I didn't think he was uh, I didn't think he was unbelievable I think it was pretty solid um, but yeah that crunching challenge from Saliero was brilliant that was uh, probably the highlight of the, the second half from him when it looked like for the world to see he was going to come and score um, but yeah uh, didn't have too much uh, def like defensively Tammy Abraham was able to get away from him uh, about once or twice in the second in the first half the second half uh, there was nothing game past him yeah yeah I thought second half he really massively grew into Graham as was our best player um, on the pitch in that second half especially uh, let's move on to Eric Dyer. I gave him a five I thought it was good this distribution from him on the night there was one really lovely ball over to Kulusevski on that right hand side but I did feel there was questionable defending from him um, on the night should have done better with the goal uh, from that corner I felt he needs to be doing better with his aerial ability um, in that situation um, and also he let Zaniolo breeze past him uh, when Romero bailed him out the chance we were talking about at the end so I think Dyer has got to be doing better defensively in my opinion yeah, and if it wasn't for uh, some other defenders, yeah, he could have been left even more exposed. There's been a die is quite good aerially, but there are some set pieces sometimes. I remember that Liverpool game back when when under Mourinho, where he just got beaten so easily um, to the header for Firmino in the last minute, end up conceding. Um, I gave him a six. I didn't think he was terrible. Um, I did. I think there was a couple of moments, but I think he was pretty accomplished throughout the ninety minutes. Um, and I think that. Um, I think he was trying to get the ball on the deck. He didn't get, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get too many passes into Harry Kane, but I think he found Son a few times and Perisic as well down that left-hand side. So I think um, his distribution was okay, but um, definitely he's capable much better. Most definitely. Uh, let's move on to Davinson Sanchez. I gave him a seven, actually. I thought um, in the first half, he was our best defender. Um, produced a great challenge on Tammy Abraham, but that did result in the corner uh, that we did concede from. Um, but yeah, I think that he did get forward quite well as well. There was a lot of times where he would make a quick pass out to the left, quick pass to the right, and he would bomb it on forward. And um, I actually felt Sanchez had a good game yesterday. Yeah, um... I think he was okay. Uh, I was. I gave him a five. Um, I think defensively, there were a few moments where he was shielding the ball out of play and it was really accomplished. And I think that's maybe why he's uh, Conte's been picking him because I think his aggressiveness um, uh, on the left uh, that left left centre back role was still pretty strong, but he's still nowhere near comfortable enough on the ball. Uh, he's still making too many mistakes. He still doesn't look sure of himself when he's in possession. And despite the fact he did have a few forays forward and he was able to um, knit the play together a couple times in the final third and keep possession, he wasn't able to really test or, or, um, uh, or trouble uh, Roma's uh, back line. And when he's in those positions, he need, we need more quality. Um, and I don't know if he's ever going to provide that from the left centre-back role. So that still uh, was left wanting. But defensively, I didn't have too much of an issue. 
Let's move on to Matt Doherty. Uh, five from me uh, was getting absolutely roasted in that first half from Zaniolo and, and the other players coming down that right-hand side. Uh, Zielewski. Um, so, I mean, they were giving him a very hard time. Um, but on the other side, I think he did attack well and he did get forward well. And um, he produced a few good runs in behind, uh, one of them resulting of hitting off the post. Um, and I thought that... That's what you get with Doherty. I thought defensively he was really poor, but going forward, um, he actually was doing well. So um, it's a bit <laughs> which one you want to go for. Yeah, I think, for, you know, when, as I've always said, in terms of our wing backs, in terms of making runs into the box, he's by far the, uh, the best we have. And he always gives a bit of trouble with the timing of his runs. And I think he has some clever movement. And uh, he was causing Roma a few a few bits of trouble. I think uh, he w might have been involved when um, Kane's goal was ruled out of offside as well. He was involved in that move, uh, making runs. He did have a bit of trouble early on um, when it when it got to uh, dealing with uh, Roma's left hand side, but I think by the end of the half he was pretty okay um, and wasn't um, getting um, uh, turned too many times. Second half, I don't remember too many involvements to be fair. And then Emerson obviously came on with twenty minutes to go. Um, but first half, I think it was um, yeah, I think it was a bit of good and bad, uh, but I don't think it was anything too extreme. All right, uh, let's move on to Pierre Emil Hoybier. I actually haven't given him a rating, so I'm going to give him five, six, something in between five and six. Um, I'm not in entirely sure what, but look, he was he was running around a bit like a nutcase in that first half, um, trying to. The thing is, though, like everyone did seem a bit leggy because of the heat in Israel. It did seem to play a, a big factor, and I think it did affect Hoybier uh, quite a bit, to be honest. Um, but you know, he was putting himself about. Nothing really too much of note from Hoybier, to be honest. Yeah, I think his passing was a bit sloppy. It was one of those days. He has these days where his just passing is so sloppy and um, and it lacks care and lacks precision. And it was one of those days, I felt, um, in the middle of the park. But then again, I thought he was really good at breaking up play. Um, I think he was teaming. There, he had, there was some good moments with him and Basuma. Um, patrolling that central midfield and making sure that Roma weren't progressing the play too much on the counter. But want to see a bit more from him um, from yesterday, uh, maybe a bit of play from deep, a bit more of that passing range, which you know, know he's capable of. So it uh, wasn't his best, but I think um, off the ball, still pretty solid. I gave him a five. All right, let's move on to Yves Bissouma in his first start for Tottenham Hotspur. We, I gave him a five. I felt like there were some nice uh, flashes of uh, turns and touches and challenges as well. Uh, but I, fi I did feel he did look slightly off the pace uh, again, to be honest. Um, it was better showing than last time. So maybe it is expected with, um, you know, him just having COVID and also playing in that heat that he was playing in yesterday. Uh, so you can be excused a bit for that. But... Well, I guess it's positive that he's got better from his last showing, to be honest. Yeah, I gave him a five, but I, I agree. I do think it was a more positive showing than he showed if for the 20 minutes against Rangers. Or no, for the second half against Rangers, wasn't it? Um, I think there were times where he was taking charge and driving forward. Then you're like, OK, this is what we want to see. But it was just too few and far between, I felt, when it came to Basuma. Um but I think off the ball, he was pretty solid, actually. A few times he was running the ball high up the pitch and really causing trouble. And I think his uh, ability to, to, to cover so much ground is really impressive. Um, so oh, he's also getting not just getting used to getting back from COVID and and um, the heat. And also he's got to get used to how we play football as well, which is, you know, getting a new system and all that kind of stuff. So I think he's growing. Um, I don't know whether he's going to be in the 11 for the first game of the season, but definitely won't be surprised a few, a few weeks in a few weeks. He will be. Let's move on to who are we going to Perisic, Ivan Perisic sevens. All, well, seven for me, uh, definitely one of our better players on the day. Um, in the first half, you saw him getting on the ball a lot uh, down that left-hand side, taking a few shots on from quite far out, uh, nothing doing there. But, you know, he was causing them problems with runs down the left. Um, I, I don't think he got too many good quality crosses in the box, but uh, he was the one causing most problems uh, to the opposition. He was culpable a tiny bit for the, um, for the goal that we conceded from that set piece. Uh, but I did feel like he put in a good display, aggressive challenges and, and trying to make stuff happen all the time. Yeah, of the starting eleven, uh, it was a toss-up for me between him and uh, maybe Kane, who was our best player. I thought he was... Um, well, Romero's in there, yeah, and Romero as well. But I thought Perisic was really good. Um, I was really encouraged by what I saw. I thought every time he was going down the left-hand side, he was causing Roma problems. Um, I think he did take a 
bit of time to get into the game, but once he got going, he was um, difficult to stop. He had a few flash, a uh, few shots from about 25 yards, which were causing um, uh, Roma trouble and it flashed just wide. In the second half, he was getting into really awkward positions, um, overlapping um, uh, the centre mids and, and Sonny and getting in other positions to cause trouble, um, but unfortunately wasn't able to uh, get the finishing touch. Um, had a really brilliant block in that second half, which um, stopped Roma going one on one. Um, I think um, I can't remember which player was about to play a through ball to uh, Tammy Abraham, and he played a brilliant sliding block to prevent that. Um, so, and when he won, he went off. Um, well, I th- actually session well, but I think he did. I think it was a really good display from uh, Perisic. All right, that's Ivan Perisic. Let's move on to Hyung Min Son. Um, five from me. Uh, plenty of running, plenty of effort, plenty of desire, but I just felt like he did lack quality uh, in that final third and he did lack service as well, uh, to be honest. There was a few times he was getting on the ball, trying to make stuff happen, but ultimately um, he was being crowded out a lot of the times he was on the ball. It felt like Jose Mourinho had a specific plan for Sonny and both Kane. Obviously, he knows what they can produce and um, did it to good effect, to be honest. And there, Roma's low block in the uh, second half really kind of stifled a lot of what we were trying to do. Yeah, I felt like first half he was getting a bit more joy um, in and around the penalty area. He was quite more central. Um, he looked a bit sharper, getting some good touches. And actually, you know, we nearly scored a, a couple of times in the first half. And he could have done, and you know, he would have been central to, to those moments. But um, second half, he definitely struggled to get into the game. He was a bit anonymous. Um, and I think that he... Uh, needs again is, is is very similar to he had problems he had last season when he was first growing into the role where when he's got too many players around him he doesn't quite know what to do he can't run at them and he doesn't have the uh, precision in his dribbling to run at them um, but then he's not that precise with his first touch either he can have like little intricate um, touches so he needs to be careful with what he does but um, no I've got, I'm not worried about Sonny once he gets going he's gonna be brilliant but I gave him a five five yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to Dejan Kulisevsky. I gave him a five as well. Uh, showed some nice touches and turns. I uh, felt like he did tire in that Israeli heat. Uh, I mean, lacked quality in the final third, to be honest. But I think that Kulisevsky, um, it's, it wasn't as good as we know what he can produce, uh, to be honest. And I felt like, you know, passing was slightly off at times and just something just felt a little bit off of, with Kulisevsky's performance yesterday. Yeah, again, first half, I thought he was involved in a lot of good moves from Spurs. I thought he was looking sharp. And if he wasn't for a slight offside, he could have been um, with an assist for Harry, for a goal for Harry Kane. It wasn't to be, unfortunately. Um, I ended up giving him a five as well on this one because I think, again, second half, um, again, kind of anonymous, didn't really get involved in the game. And first half, I, as, as much as he had some good moments, I didn't see enough from him. So um, I gave him a five, but I still think he had some really nice touches. Yeah, there were some really nice touches there. Uh, last of the starting 11, Harry Kane. Um, I'm giving him a five, actually, and um, I'm going... He was trying uh, to get involved the whole time. First half, dropping deep a lot of the time, uh, trying and knit the play together. Uh, felt like, like I said before with Sonny, I felt like Roma had a had a really good plan uh, to deal with Kane and Son. Jose Mourinho knows exactly uh, what these two players are about. Second half, um, you know, it did improve a little bit because he should have had a penalty, that's for sure. Um, and he would have slotted that away and that's 1-1. But, you know, he's got to be doing better from that um, best chance of the game that, that got presented to him with a beautiful cross from um, Ryan Cessnon and I feel Harry Kane's got to be putting that away uh, but having said that I know I've given him a five uh, but I did feel he was better than Kulisevsky and Hyung Min Son but again still not a great display from Harry Kane yeah I thought he was our best attacker I gave him a seven um, I thought he was the one um, getting any joy out of the Roma centre backs um, for most of the for most of the game. Although even that was limited, but I still think he was getting more joy than the other um, the other forwards. Um, I think I think he won the did he I think he won the free kick. I think that um, obviously he on the edge of the box which he missed. He definitely should have had a penalty. Yeah, yeah he gets a mark up for for winning it and then a mark yeah, down exactly, for taking yeah. it. <laughs> exactly, he should never have taken it right into the wall. Um, brilliant. Um, turn I think on the centre back which uh, was a stonewall penalty bizarre refereeing to give a free kick against Kane um, he did have a goal ruled out for offside in the first half which uh, was a very tight call um, and it was a good finish from Kane it was, it was, it, he was unlucky there and then yeah the second the, that chance for the header just over the bar just slightly too high for him but you know a striker of Kane's quality has got to be steering that on target so he'll be disappointed but I thought he was probably our best attacker for me 
in terms of the substitutes, came on Longley, who came on at half time for Davinson Sanchez, and I thought he impressed. I really did. Um, great lung busting runs to, to help the attack. And not only did he have those lung busting runs, but he had the composure at the end of it to get good quality uh, balls into the box. And uh, that's what you want to see from Clement Longley. Um, to be honest, I mean, I know I said Sanchez uh, played well before, but Clement Longley showed what Sanchez has not done basically since joining Spurs. The quality on the ball, um, absolutely sensational. I did feel like there were a quite a couple of questionable moments defensively, uh, but I was just really impressed with the way he went forward. I thought it was a real great cameo. I gave him a seven. Um, I think that his on the ball quality was there for all to see. I think he played two crosses in the box uh, on the off the top of my head. One of them was from Romero off the end of a dribble. I think he beat two players, got across in the box right onto uh, Romero's head, and uh, Romero steered it wider than another one late in the game. Uh, across from a deep position this time onto Emerson's head and he couldn't steer it on target and just in those two moments he showed more quality from crossing the ball than I think Sanchez has in his whole Tottenham career so I think that goes to show what a difference a player with a bit of quality on in his left foot playing left centre back can bring so I'm very excited uh, about him uh, playing more in this starting eleven for yeah. me yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. Um, and the Ben Tancourt as well, who came on at halftime, I'm giving him a six. I mean, I did think he came on, got brought more energy to midfield, brought more bite to midfield as well, um, as we did regain uh, control of that midfield. But uh, there's just something a little bit missing there from Ben Tancourt. I'm not too sure what it is. Maybe it's his um, attacking intent. But I think that um, he definitely brought more energy to the midfield. Yeah, and I think he was a pass to the ball forward a, more, a bit more than Basuma was. Um, I think he was a good cameo. I gave him a six as well. I think he played. Pro I think he improved us when he came on. I think we had more control of the game once he came on, but you could argue maybe that's because Roma was sitting back more because they were winning. You could argue that, but... They were low blocking that second half hard. Yeah, yeah, which is, which is a fair argument, but I did feel like we had more control of the game anyway, and I think Basuma was a big reason, um, of, uh, not Basuma, Bentancur was a big reason because of that. So I think it was a good cameo, but want to see a bit more of a spark um, when, in terms of when we're really pushing for something. I want to see him come, just come up with a few moments of, uh, of quality. And unfortunately, he keeps it simple too often. Mm. Which is, I think, a problem with all our midfielders, to be honest. Definitely. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely argue that. I mean, a few more players did come on, but I didn't give them a rating because there just wasn't um, enough time for them on the pitch. I mean, there was Emerson, Fraser Forster, Richarlison, Lucas, uh, Sessegnon. Uh, the two players I want to talk about is Richarlison and Sessegnon. And I think Richarlison... Um, he came on and, you know, he showed intent. As soon as he got the ball, he was trying to run at them. He was trying to be direct. Um, and he did really well at times, getting past a few men. Um, and you really saw the energy and the passion uh, to really try and get a goal for Spurs. But unfortunately, he did kind of fall at the last hurdle every time. Um, Ryan Sessegnon, I thought he came on and um, straight away put in an unbelievable cross for Harry Kane, uh, where Harry Kane should have done better from. And he provided a good outlet there on the left-hand side. Um, the rest of the players that come on, I think there was, wasn't really too much to know. Yeah, uh, in terms of Richarlison, there were some really good um, dummies and feints in there when he came on. He he did provide a bit of a spark for us. Uh, he got into the box a few times, but the only problem is I don't remember too many shots on goal. He was able to um, get out of those situations, which is a bit of a shame when you when you're when he's good at creating those situations. But it showed promising signs, and I agree. Sessegnon had a really great, great cameo. That that cross with his right foot as well. Uh, right onto Kane's head. So with his weaker foot, very fair play to Session. I think he had a few decent moments as well. So those were the standouts, but the other players, there wasn't there wasn't too much to know, really. Absolutely. So Conte, we're ready for Conte? Uh, we haven't done any Conte ratings yeah, in preseason pre yet, um, but Conte ratings are coming back to you next week mm -hmm. when the Premier League begins. But that is your player ratings uh, for the 1 0 loss against Roma. The countdown continues to the Premier League season. I cannot wait, uh, but we will be bringing you content from Israel, um, obviously, up until Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, you Spurs. Yeah.